Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I don't know if your experience with astrophotography is like mine, but I seem to take two steps forward and then one step back and then have to scramble back to try to recover that last step. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. I'm going to go back to a project since it's been raining for the past 40 days and probably be raining for another 40 days. Uh, going back to past projects and doing some processing on them, and one of the trouble projects that I had was with the Crescent Nebula NGC 6888. What I want to take a look at here is using Starnet++ and CloneStamp within PixInsight to remove some fairly obvious stacking artifacts. So let's get started. Let's go into PixInsight. All right, so here are the two images for the stacked images for the Crescent Nebula. Now, in this case, it's the sulfur signal for this particular target is very, very weak. And so most people, and I found this to be true for myself as well, just ignore sulfur and collect data only in hydrogen alpha and oxygen three. The hydrogen alpha data is shown over here, and it looks okay from a stacked image perspective. The oxygen three data, however, has some rather obvious uh, stacking artifacts and this came about due to carelessness on my part when I was c originally collecting the data I would check for focus but I wasn't being very careful I wasn't being very vigilant and it was only after I had collected all the data for this target and then moved on quickly to another target and then the process changed the orientation of the camera that I noticed that my oxygen 3 data were coming out of focus losing focus uh, fairly early in the imaging process and so I ended up having to throw out all of well most of my oxygen oxygen-3 data and then went back out to ca collect more oxygen-3 data not only on this target but other targets that I was uh, imaging at the same uh, time period but in the process of going back to this target and trying to reset the orientation of the camera I did not was not able to establish the 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 same orientation or alternatively I was using I was getting the oxygen oxygen data on this target while also getting the oxygen data on I believe it was the Eastern Veil Nebula where I have to be a little more picky about how I orient the camera in order to fit it into the field of view. At any rate I decided that I would sacrifice the orientation of the camera for this particular target because this target is relatively small within the field of view and I didn't mind stacking artifacts however I didn't realize the stacking artifacts were going to be as obvious as they are. By the way what I typically do is do some initial processing of the uh, data up for each channel in the linear domain for example I'll do a dynamic background extraction and then I'll do if the data will tolerate it I'll do some noise uh, reduction in the linear space and then using the histogram transformation convert them up to the nonlinear space and that's where we are here so these are nonlinear images that I'm getting ready to combine using the channel combination tool here and I'll use the HOO combination for this for this uh, channel combination so I'll put the hydrogen uh, the H alpha signal in the red and then I'll put the oxygen 3 data in the green and the blue and when I execute that I come up with this signal here. It's obvious again these stacking artifacts coming over from the O3 channel are clearly responsible for this tonal difference across this boundary and the existence of this boundary here and here and you can see a line here and a line here and these are very difficult to take care of or to eliminate once you get it into the combined color image it's much better to deal with these artifacts uh, in in the individual channels before you combine them together and that's what I want to talk about a little bit today and I found the the incorporation of the Starnet++ tool as a legitimate module within PixInsight to be very useful for this sort of thing. If I'm going to clean up this image and try to get rid of these stacking artifacts what I do is is take a make a couple of clones of this particular image and I'll just move them out of the way and then I come up to Starnet++ and the first thing I do is create an image with just the stars so I want to take this image and pull the stars out I click this check mark checkbox here and then bring the instance and just apply it to that clone and then that clone image will be replaced with this image where it's just the stars and you can see it's done a fairly good job not a perfect job but a fairly good job of pulling out the stars 
when you get down to this bright area over here in these corners, you can see that Starnet Plus Plus did not was not able to successfully pull out the stars from the background, and as a result, it didn't pull out any stars, and so there's a gap here. Now, once again, the target, the center of focus for this image is the crescent nebula right in the center of the image, so I'm not going to be too concerned about that. I'm going to let that go uh, at this time uh, and just live with the live with the consequences, but running Starnet++ Plus Plus does a very good job of pulling out the stars. Now the next thing I do is go back to the Starnet++ Plus Plus dialog box, untick that, and now what I want to do is just pull out the background. So after I untick that, I can bring the apply the instance over to the remaining clone and I'll get something that looks like this. And so now I can very easily begin to work with this image without having to work around the stars. We're done with Starnet++. Plus Plus. Let's go into Clone Stamp. I'm going to make the window Clone Stamp active in this window. I'm going to dial this up to a size of 50 in terms of, of the size of the region that we'll be working with. I'm also going to make this a very faint effect and bring up the softness a bit. And now what I'm going to do is go in here. I'm going to press the Control key. I'm going to deal with this area. I want to extend the tonal characteristics of this part of the image back into this part of the image so it doesn't look like there's a, a transition from dark to light. I'm going to press the control button. It's going to start painting what it was at the source where that X is wherever I'm pressing this. Now I'm going to keep the left mouse button pressed and just paint. Just move this over as if it's a, a spray can, spray paint can and just paint back in this area, moving in a pseudo-random uh, way. And you may still find that you'll get a periodic feature here, and you can eliminate that. Let's first of all accept these changes. So I'm going to say OK to that. Then I'm going to come back in, click once in the window. That makes the clone stamp active. Then I'm going to press the Control button and do the same thing, but coming from a different direction this time and I'm just going to paint again spray painting this corner trying to get rid of any little features I put in that uh, create a periodic characteristic to it now this is going to be in the background so whatever I'm doing it's going to be a lot less obvious than those ugly borders that I have in there now but you can see that I've more or less extended this part of the image up into this corner and have obliterated that line and I can do of course the same thing here click in the image now press the control button, click again, and I can just start painting again. And if I kill a star or two, that's okay, because I don't really care. I've got plenty of stars left over. And I can just move back over into this region. And this area was not as bad as long as I get rid of that line that was there. Do the same thing for this corner here. Just move around in a sort of a random way, killing all of this ugly border borders created during the stacking uh, process of uh, the multiply or differently oriented images and eventually I can clean up this area here and then finally I can get rid of this artifact in the upper left hand corner and then I might come in and do this from a uh, from the side as well. And then we're done with clone stamp, and we've taken care of these these troublesome corners. Now we'll kill off clone stamp. It's a dynamic tool, so you got to kill it off before you can do anything else. And now, if you look at what I have after fixing the image, this is what I came up with before. And so now this is what we have. So now all we have to do to come back to, to get back to an image of our oxygen data with stars is to use the pixel math option where we can put in the O3 with the no stars, but now corrected, fixed, plus the, o, the uh, file or the image that has the stars in it, the ones that only has the stars in it. We will set a destination and have it create a, uh, a new image Okay, using the same type of target we had before. We can execute and we come up with this as our replacement image. Now this is what we want to compare to 
compare with our original image. So this is what we started off with, our original O3 data with the bad stacking artifacts. And now we've come back, we've eliminated those, eliminated those stacking artifacts, although you see we are missing some stars back in here because StarNet did not pick up on these stars in this bright, brighter area here. Uh, nevertheless, we have fixed the stacking artifacts. We can go back to our channel combination, but instead I can replace the original O3 data with the fixed O3 data. And now when I combine the data, I get this image. So now this is what we're working, we can start working with this image instead of this image, and now we don't have to deal with these artifacts. And then when I finally get through, get done with the processing for this particular target, I'll come up with something that looks like this. I'm not distracted by the uh, ugliness of the stacking artifacts that are going on in the corners. So I've been very happy with the introduction of StarNet++ as a legitimate module within PixInsight. Now the best way to fix artifacts is not to have them in the first place. So watch your focus and watch your camera orientation when you go back to take pictures of a target you took uh, some time ago and hopefully you can avoid these stacking artifacts altogether. But for now at least I can get a halfway decent picture out of some data that otherwise was looking fairly dodgy. Okay guys well that's all I have for you today just a little quick hit as I go back and try to recover some data from my previous imaging sessions on these rainy and cloudy days that we seem to be having and will have at least for the foreseeable future. I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.